This week in the short story unit, we are looking at how you can use dialogue within your short stories. So for this week's direct instruction, we're going to specifically talk about punctuating dialogue. Before we do that though, let's begin with, what re with a reminder of what dialogue does. First, dialogue is when characters are talking to each other. This is important in, a st in your short stories because we've all read books with long sections of description and let's be honest, we all get bored. Dialogue helps to keep your reader engaged and helps to provide them with a little bit more information about your characters. Dialogue also shows characters' personalities and explains what is going on in the story. Like I said, dialogue keeps us interested and <clears throat> dialogue is a great way for our characters to tell us what's going on in the story instead of our narrator. Also, when dialogue is done well, it helps the reader to get to know each character so that through the dialogue we feel like we've really learned who this character is and what they're about. So writing good dialogue is very important to writing a successful short story. One thing to consider as you're writing your dialogue is to think about the voice that your character would, ha would have. This one probably isn't the way a seventh grader would talk. I am pleased to have met you today. I sincerely hope we can continue our acquaintance in the days to come. It just doesn't work with the idea of a 7th grade character, a 12 year old boy or girl. Um, it's not the, their voice, it's not the type of voice that a 7th grader would, would use. You know, something more along the lines of, hey, it was great to meet you today, or you know, would, would fit the type of character in their voice a little bit better. And on the same, in the same line of thinking, this would not be the way that an adult would talk. I don't want to go to the grocery store. You can't make me. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. This would be much more suited to a young elementary school student or a toddler. So you want to make sure that the voice or the dialogue that you are giving your character would fit their personality, their age, possibly even their gender. Um, and all of that needs to be taken into consideration in order to make sure that you are writing effective dialogue. Now there are two types of quotations or dialogue that you can use in your story. The first is what we call a direct quotation. This represents a person's exact words or thoughts and is enclosed in quotation marks. For example, I am going to the library after school, I told my mother. I am going to the library after school are my exact words that I, the writer spoke to my mother so therefore it goes in quotation marks the other type of quotation is an indirect quotation this reports only the general meaning of what a person said or thought and does not require quotation marks along the same lines as the first example an indirect quotation would say the following I told my mother that I was going to the library after school I'm not actually speaking to my mother directly in this sentence, I'm just telling my reader what I told her. Um, it's a little less effective, but both have their uses in the short story. Now let's talk about the rules for punctuating dialogue. These are going to be important because we want to make sure that we're writing our short stories correctly. First, we need to indent every time a different person speaks. So if you're having a conversation between two or three characters and they're each saying a sentence or two, each time you change speakers, you're going to need a new paragraph. You're going to need to indent. For instance, that boy is so cute, I said to my best friend as we walked down the hallway. I think he smells bad, she replied. I'm talking in the first um, two lines. I indent where it says that boy is so cute. Then my friend responds to my talk and says I think he smells bad and since we've changed speakers we have a second indent. Indented the first paragraph here and the second paragraph here, the second speaker. So each time we have changed speakers we have indented. The second rule is you need to put the exact words of a character in quotation marks. We want to make sure that we put only the exact words and nothing extra. I can't wait for Kansas to win the national championship again, said Mr. Springsteen to Mr. Sleep. 
<clears throat> in this case, case, Mr. Springsteen's exact words are, I can't wait for Kansas to win the national championship again. Those are the only lines that get quotation marks. The rest of, it is, it, rest of the sentence is telling us who was speaking and who they were speaking to. So make sure that you're putting only the exact words of the character in quotation marks. Third, set off the quoted words from the rest of the sentence with a comma. Pizza is my favorite food, said Justin Bieber. The quotation, the first part of the sentence, pizza is my favorite food, needs, the quote, needs a comma after it. That sets it apart from the part of the sentence that tells us who is speaking. In the second example, Justin Bieber said, pizza is my favorite food, the comma goes before the quotation marks. Once again, though, it's separating the exact quote from the rest of the sentence. At the end of quoted words, put punctuation inside the quotation marks. When will we leave for lunch? Asked the hungry student. So when will we leave for lunch is a question. So the punctuation, the question mark at the end, needs to go inside the quotation marks. The happy student exclaimed, communications is my favorite class. In this case, we have the exclamation, communications is my favorite class. So the exclamation point at the end must go inside the quotation mark. Here are some words to get you thinking about words that you can say other than he said and she said, because it gets a little boring if we all we see is he said, she said, he said, she said. So words like agreed, declared, exaggerated, rejoiced, teased, suggested, not only do they spice up our writing a little bit, but they tell us a little bit about why the character is saying something or how the character is saying something. So please keep these words in mind, and there are tons of other ones that you could use as you're writing and adding dialogue to your story. In conjunction with this video, there are, I believe, 11 questions for you to answer at the bottom of this assignment. Um, for each one, you are either adding the necessary dial, um, the necessary quotation marks, or if the sentence doesn't need quotation marks because it is an indirect quotation, then you're telling me that it's correct as written. Please make sure that you take your time on these exercises because um, they're really going to help you when it comes to punctuating the dialogue in your final copy and rough draft of your short story. If you have any questions about this assignment or any of the assignments this week, please make sure to send me an email. And I also want to remind you that you should be working on your short story. Um, and you should have been working on that since it was introduced back on um, the third week of classes. Um, that is a 5 to 15 page paper, so please make sure that you don't leave it for the last minute. Um, I hope you all have a good week. Bye.